Welcome to this section of the TI-84 tutorial and in this section we're going to cover the topics of storing variables and uh, recalling variables and scientific notation. All of these are really important things that you'll be using your calculator for daily and so what we want to do is explore this button down here which is the store button STO means store um, in blue above it we have the recall button we'll talk about that in a second and uh, we'll get into scientific notation here in a bit so these are things you'll be using a lot basically if you're doing calculations with your calculator uh, frequently you'll use a number a lot so let's say you're doing a calculation in um, algebra and um, you uh, you know you use the number uh, six point five five a lot let's just say you happen to be doing a problem and you're using the number six point five five a whole bunch now you can type in six point five five you know all the time when you're doing your calculations but it might get cumbersome to type in 6.55 all the time for everything especially if the number that you're, you're dealing with is 6.5523 you know, or something maybe it's an, an, even a longer number so the way you get around that in the TI calculator is you store it into a variable and then you can use the letter the variable that you pick anywhere you want so let's say you want to store the number 6.55 and you want to store it so you type in the number that you want to store and then you go and hit the store button down here and notice that a little arrow pops out pops up and that's telling you that you're storing the number 6.55 into a variable and you can pick whatever variable you want let's say we want to pick the number uh, the letter D right let's say uh, pretend for instance that 6.55 is the diameter of a circle maybe and you don't want to type in 6.55 all the time so you just put it in a variable called D so you just hit enter now it's just returning the number 6.55 basically that's confirmation to you that everything worked but um, at this point the number 6.55 is now in the letter D so if you clear the screen and you just put D up here and hit enter it's going to return 6.55 now let's say you were doing uh, you know you're going to calculate the radius so you're going to take the diameter and you're going to divide it by 2 let's say to calculate the radius well then you could just do that instead of typing 6.55 divided by 2 what if you wanted to square the radius so you could say uh, D divided by 2 and then you could square that answer so this is the radius squared so you could hit that now you see how much easier it is to put the D in there um, and it's also nice and symbolic especially if you're dealing with something like diameter you, you know that D is diameter and if you have radius you could put R for radius now you can use any of these uh, letters up here A B C D E F G and on and on and on you can use any of those to um, to to store variables in so you could put you know 78.25 let's say and you can store that the arrow pops up and you can put that under Y let's say and you can hit enter so that number is stored in there and then from that point four you could take a Y and you could add six uh, you know and then you could uh, you know multiply by nine times Y let's say you could have a long expression like that so the calculator is going to take um, six times nine times Y and then we're going to add Y to it and then you get a big number so it's just a shortcut way of basically putting these these um, instead of typing these numbers out all the time you can just put them into variables now one thing I'm going to show you when you when you use the uh, variable let's go back to D it's still stored there it doesn't disappear when your calculator is turned off when I put D here and add 6 the letter D is it up here and I know that D is equal to something so it's going to use that value but the letter D is up here um, in my little calculator window just like you would expect now right above the store button is a recall button right it basically serves almost exactly the same function if you put recall second function up here and hit recall you see recall pops up here now let's put D so I'm gonna put D here so it's telling me recall the memory contents of variable D so I'm gonna go ahead and hit enter so see it puts 6.55 in its place and I can add six to that if I like and hit enter so do you see the difference between these two things really there's no difference mathematically the same answer pops out it's just that when I put the variable name then I'm just going to have that represented up here if I put recall then it's going to yank the memory contents of what I've stored in there and then put that number on the screen for me to see 
So this is the main difference. Um, you know, 99% of the time, you're just going to hit the variable that you store the value into and use it in a calculation. That is what I use this for all the time. The only time that you would ever use this recall button is if you just kind of, you know, for whatever reason in your expression that you typed in, you really wanted to see the value instead of, an, instead of the variable. And really, I don't think that's going to be too often. So just remember, it's a useful thing. If you're using a number a lot, you know, 9.996, you can just hit the store button. Um, and if you put it into a letter that you've already used previously, like let's put it into D, uh, then it's going to basically overwrite that. So the latest thing that you put in there is what you're going to have. And you can use it you can use it to do any calculation that you can put a number into your calculator, so it's really useful. Now, let me show you another thing. The, the things that you mostly, the, the letters that you mostly are going to use to, to store your variables are going to be all the letters of the alphabet. So you have 26 different letters to choose from. That's really neat. Um, and another thing I'm going to mention is over here, you see how in blue we have a pi up here and we have an E over here. These guys are already stored with the common values of pi. That's what you would expect, 3.14, and then some digits after that, and then the value of e. So you're not going to really, uh, you're not going to really uh, do anything with these other than use them. So let's say you were going to calculate uh, something with pi squared. So you could put, you know, three times pi squared. So this could be, you know, just some calculation, three times pi squared. You could just put it in like that. And the value of pi is going to be used here, just like any other variable. It's just that these are used so much, they're permanently stored. So always use these guys. It's very useful. Uh, you'll be using pi a whole lot in, in almost any class you're taking. All right. And uh, the only other thing I want to mention is that you have A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, all the way to Z. The only letter that you won't find here is the letter X. The letter X is used so frequently in, uh, in, in algebra that it has its own button up here. So you see this button says X, T, Theta, and N. Basically this button is used for multiple different purposes, but almost all the time you're going to use it just to put the letter X up there. So that's what the, that's why it's, X is, is listed first. These other things we'll talk about later. But right now just think of it as the variable X. So instead of having to hit second function to get a letter up there, um, you, you just have the button right at your fingertips. So the, the value of X you could say, okay, I'm going to put 10.2 into the value of x and I'm going to hit that guy and 10.2 is there so I can do x squared or, or whatever I want to do and I'm going to be able to basically use it like a like a variable just like any other it's just that x is used so much that it's got its own button so if you just need a quick a quick variable to store something just use this button right here now this button's also used when we graph equations so we'll get to that that a little bit later uh, there's one more thing I want to talk about in this section it's really important it's called scientific notation um, if you want to represent a very big number, let's say you want to represent 5.55 times 10 to the 6th, then you would put 5.55, and the button for scientific notation is here, EE. -E. So this E means times 10 to the 6th. So you don't have to put any exponent buttons. You don't have to do anything else. This means 5.55 times 10 to the power of 6. So you're basically moving your decimal point six places that way. And if you hit enter, you'll see that that's exactly what it's doing. Um, 4.152 times 10 to the seventh power. That's a very large number. You're moving the decimal places seven points to the right. And that's exactly what it's doing. Now, let's say you want to represent a small number. Let's say you're talking about, you know, the radius of an atom or something like that. You might have 1.254 times 10 to the negative 9. So the negative, to make it a number negative, you have it down here, negative 9. You hit enter, and you'll see that this number was actually so small, it couldn't put all the decimal points there, but it represented the number just like we expected. Let's pick a slightly smaller number, 7.21 times 10 to the negative 4, let's say. Let's see what it pops up there. Again, still a little bit too, uh, not enough digits to really display it, but let's try uh, 3, 4.5 times 10 to the negative 2. And you'll see in that case that it was able to push the decimal place out. So basically, it's using the exact values up here. It's just displaying it uh, in terms of a, of a real decimal here for us to see. 
Um, but you can use these in calculations, uh, no problem. Now, you might say, well, what is, you know, three times the radius of an atom or something like that? So you would have three times, and if you were going to represent a really small number, you would have 10.2 um, times 10 to the negative 9, let's say. And we're multiplying them by 3, and so the answer you're going to get is going to all be taken care of. And the scientific notation is going to pop out here uh, just like you would expect. You can do use these numbers um, just like you would use any other number. 5.2 times 10 raised to the power of 4. I can square it, let's say. It's a good idea to put it inside of parentheses to make it clear that everything in here is a single number that you want to square. Then you go ahead and do that, and you get a, obviously a very large number. Um, and you can store these guys into variables just like anything else. So 785.36 times 10 to the power of 4, let's say. And I want to store it, so I'm going to hit the store button. And I'm going to go ahead and put it in the variable x just because it's right there for me. And it pops out, and that's confirmation telling me that the variable is now stored. So I can do, you know, x squared, or I can take the square root of x if I want to. And it does all the variables in the calculation. So scientific notation is something you're going to use in all of your chemistry classes and your physics classes. Um, anytime you're really dealing with, with um, the metric system or any kind of small or big number, you're going to use it. So remember that that's right here at your fingertips, right next to the parentheses. So this section was a good overview of the recall button and the store button. Basically, if you're using a number a lot, it's helpful to store it into a variable. You can use any letter of the alphabet here. Uh, as a as a alpha function, and uh, now remember you, you you can't spell words. You can't try to spell you know a b c and use that as a variable. You're using individual letters as variables, uh, so you can store anything in there. You have the letter x conveniently at your fingertips always right here. You can always use the pi and e. Uh, which are dedicated buttons that always have these values stored here. You can use those in your calculations. Very, very, very nice. And scientific notation button is down here if you if you ever need to represent, you know, a very big or a very small number in a calculation. And uh, I think that's a good introduction to to these concepts. So make sure and use it. It can save you a lot of time.